When was the last time you did one of these? Since the Posh cast. How many years ago was that? Well, something came up on my Facebook today, and it said five years. Oh, it was, okay. I didn't realize, I thought it was like a little bit longer than that. Well. You can pull it a little bit closer. It was, it was about, we kept it going, so it was a little, actually less than five years ago. Okay. Yeah. We did it for four years. Four years total. Yeah. How many episodes would you estimate? Well, we did one every Monday, so you do the math. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, but more episodes fun. than me. I, th- I think this is episode like 130-something, and you're my 130th guest. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It's cool to sit down and talk with like a variety of people, because I, I think this is my favorite way to connect with people, just like sit down, and there's something about being on camera and talking on the microphones that I feel like people kind of amplify their personality. Like they don't want to be like passively listening or like looking around the room or like on their phone, you know? Yeah. You're more engaged. There's no TV on, no video games, no music, nothing. It's just like pure talking. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say one of your favorite guests were overall? Oh gosh. Um, we had a lot of musicians on, and I think that was pretty cool because I like to hear about their travels and, you know, things like that. And then they could really talk about a lot of different stuff. They musicians could, like artists? Yeah. Of all different genres? Um, we, we had a lot of just indie and things like that, but people that were on the road, and they, they could really talk about style because we were a style podcast. So mm-hmm. we talked about fashion, culture, um, some music, some interior design, stuff like that. So talked to a lot of creators, and that kind of went over into music or food. Things so like, like that. predominantly creative people. Yeah, yeah. That's cool to connect with creatives, too. Yeah, they're weird and fun. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like whenever you're very uh, – because I consider myself, like, relatively creative, and I feel like whenever you're not creative, it's sometimes people consider you like a little wacky. Have you ever met somebody who's very by the books, very logical thinkers? I feel like they're, they have a difficult time understanding the value oh that gosh. creative people bring. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You have, as a creative, you really do, you're more open. I think you, you're looking for inspiration. And so your, your mind is more open to new ideas and new ways of thinking and all that. Absolutely. Yeah. Creative people are my favorite. I was talking to somebody the other day and they said that there was a big like podcast boom where everybody was having their own podcast like a few years ago, then it died out. And then now it's like rebuilding up again. Like maybe the past two years, it got like really popular again. I believe it. I mean, I I think as technology grows and as it becomes more accessible for people, more people are able to access podcasts and create their own. I think that has a big thing to do with it. Absolutely. I mean, this is, like, super portable. Like, as much shit as there is right here, like, I can throw it all in one big box. I mean, portable, not like I could take it across the world with me, but I could, I mean, it's just one crate. Yeah. Which is cool. Like, if you want to go from one city to another, and it takes, I mean, it only takes, like, 10, 15, or probably 10 minutes to set up. It's cool. You can just create your own little studio. Well, I like your, your little setup that you have here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Where'd and, you get your curtains? Uh, Walmart. Okay. Yeah. Have you heard of it? <laughs> I love Walmart, but I shouldn't say that. People hate Walmart. And then my roommate just, like, went on this binge of cleaning up our house because, like, pretty much renovating our house because he moved in for the first time, and he's just going crazy with decorating and whatnot. And he's done a really awesome job. But uh, with that being said, he, like, threw up some more curtains over there to – I don't really know why, but I guess just to add, like, a peel or something. For decoration. Okay. And like I said, it looks like a brothel down here. It looks well, really creepy at first. <laughs> I like it. It's good. So who who were some of your favorite guests? Well, like I said, we had several musicians. We had a lot of local boutique owners and things like that that came on and talked about going to market. Um, so, you know, or they would go to Las Vegas or Chicago and they could come back and tell us about all the trends and things that they saw. And I always thought that was fascinating because – it, everything works about a year in advance. So if you go to market in the fall, then they're saying everything that's going to be hot in the spring. And that's with like style and clothing uh, and decor, whatnot? Home decor and fashion, yeah. Okay, okay. 
I heard Australia is ahead of us. Like they, whatever happens, everybody's over in, ahead of us. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Like you always think the U.S. is going to be on top of like style and uh, whatnot. No, I don't. Know. So like whatever ha- is happening over in like France or Italy or Australia. Oh, well, that's where the luxury brands are. That's where the big designers are, and so everything trickles down, and then everything trickles down to the Midwest too. So yeah, right. The Midwest <laughs> is the last to get everything. But yeah, that's what they were saying at um, the old internship I worked under you. They, yeah. they were saying like if you could sell a mar- if you could sell in the Midwest market, then you can definitely sell on like any of the coasts. Yeah, people test here, and w- you know we have a hard time. The Midwest people, we don't like change, and we we won't just immediately trust a brand or trust a product. We're very wary. So, I wonder why that is. Just less open, probably. Yeah. I mean, generally. I don't know though. Be interesting to think about. I guess more. Uh, more reserved, probably a lot more predominantly like farmers. But why? Why would that be like the, the, desired place to. Like, why would the Midwest be a desired place to have a testing to to see like if it works here, then it'll work other places. Like to to kind of penetrate like the hardest market. Right. right. Really. Yeah. Seems kind of counterintuitive. You think it would start off with like the. You know, like one well, of the easier lo- markets. A lot of brands do. A lot of brands do start on the East Coast or the West Coast. But then when it comes to infiltrating the Midwest, they, they don't anticipate yeah, how, how difficult it's actually going to be. So I guess there are two approaches to it. Yeah. I couldn't imagine starting a product and then trying to sell it, or trying to see if it works here. Oh, I would love to. I'd love to have a product. But I haven't thought of one, a good one yet. Yeah, right? Yeah. Let me think of one. I feel like some of the best ideas are like the simple ones. Oh yeah, I'd want something super simple. I don't want to do anything makeup related or like hair or any of that. Like the first person to come up with like a super pencil basic. sharpener. Yeah, super basic. I don't know. Like I have this keychain that's pretty awesome that here I'll show you. But it's um this like what do you call it like a uh, Brass knuckles. But oh, no way. It's a cap face. Like Wait, like it, it pops like a bottle cap off? Uh, no, it's for if someone is following you, you can stab them. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, look how simple it is. It's just a little cap face, and your fingers go in its eyes, and its ears is what could potentially take somebody's eye out, or you could go for the jugular. But You're morbid. This is a very simple product, and I think – they're making a lot of money off this. There are a lot of girls who have like pepper spray, tasers, just yeah. like attached to their but this keychain. This is a cat, so it's cute, but. And you're not <laughs> actually gonna like mace yourself either. Right. It's it's very intentional if you're going to use it. <laughs> so, but that that's the kind of product I'm talking about. Okay. This goes on your keychain. So going back to your podcast, did you? Yeah. How did you structure it? Did you like? Was it more of an interview and you would have like a list of questions? Because I started off it this podcast. It was a podcast, total free-for-all, honestly. Yeah. Kind of like we're doing now, just like like talking shit about whatever. I think whatever. if you try to direct it too much, then it's not organic and then people start feeling uncomfortable and, you know, just let the conversation go where it's going to go. Absolutely. I mean, if you have things that you really want to know and you really want to ask, then... I think that's great. That seems organic. But if it feels forced, if you're just like, oh, I can't really think of, I don't know what I want to ask, you know. Mm-hmm. Usually conversations tend to go the right direction, I feel like. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, it was a free-for-all. And um, I had several several friends that would come on as co-hosts. Um, so they were, they were in and out. But I made sure my co-hosts, like, all – were very different so I wanted a lot of um you know diversity going on and I wanted differences in opinion I wanted I wanted that element so that's kind of why we would have you know a couple different people on or and it was an hour 45 minutes to an hour okay but it's cool it's cool because you get this all it is is just audio and you can run whatever direction you want to do with that you can do a solo podcast you can have I know some people have like up to like seven people and I don't know. Mine's more of just talking off the record about I, whatever. Yeah. I like this. I like the one-on-one. I mean, that's how I actually like 
to have conversations anyway. I mean, I like one-on-one conversation versus having to talk over a group or things like that. So for me, this is great. Absolutely. Yeah. And you can learn so much from everybody. There's a, there's a lot of art that goes into it. Like uh, learning learning the craft. Just learning how to like execute a better conversation. It's weird. It's so weird. Learning to, to listen. Yeah. <laughs> That's like my main goal with this right now. Because I realize I'll, I'll listen and I'm like, wow, I don't actually listen that well. Like in the very, <laughs> like the early ones especially, yeah. I, I'm like, wow, I didn't really listen to a word they just said. And it's really cool to analyze yourself and kind of sit back and watch because the camera doesn't lie, you know? Right. See yourself from that third person point of view. I mean, I don't think, I think I have my moments. I think I can be a good listener sometimes, but I definitely need to work on it. It's still, it's still a challenge for me. Same. But I think it's because I just think about a lot of stuff all the time. I'm a very, you know, I'm a creative, so I just, I'm kind of like a squirrel, and I do have to really make a conscious effort to listen, to focus, you know, otherwise I can go in my brain, in my head, and just be there for a while, and then people are like, hello, <laughs> Especially, there? like, you say something, and then, like, three things might pop up, and I'm like, I want to say this, I want to say this, I want to say this, and I can, I can choose to act on, like, any of those, or... But then sometimes you realize you're thinking about those and you're like, it's not like you're actually listening to like engage with what they're saying, but you're listening just to respond and like say what you know. Oh, which is so obnoxious. It's it's like it, I didn't realize I did that as much as because I, 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 I think I'm a decent listener. Yeah. But that's something I've been way more intentional with, like trying to improve upon. That's so great. I feel like you're making a conscious effort to be more self-aware. And I think that is one thing that humanity needs right now we need people that are looking inward and thinking okay am I being you know do I have a good grasp on my strengths and weaknesses what am I good at what I mean because then you are going to be much more receptive to you know other people's ideas opinions teamwork you know all of those things I just don't think that people are very self-aware at all it's hard it's hard it is hard but I think we could do better at making a conscious effort to try. Absolutely. So. I don't like you kind of I, I, I will go throughout life and then I'll reflect on times and I'm like, wow, I was being kind of an asshole there or like there I wasn't listening or whatever. Yeah. And I mean, it's really about asking people that you trust around you to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. It's honesty. You know, hey. If you're giving a presentation to, you know, t a group of 20 people and everyone's like, great job, great job, but you don't land the account, you know, maybe it was you're trying to pitch something, you don't land the account, but everyone tells you good job, what does that do for you? Absolutely nothing. Like, you obviously didn't do that great of a job because you didn't land the account. So out of that 20 people, is there one person that could really sit with you and say, okay, I think you could work on this, this, and this? You know, I think it's really hard to be self-aware. You know, you ask a group of 50 people if everybody's a good, they think they're a good driver, I guarantee probably 45 of those people are going to be like, yeah, I'm a great driver. Mm -hmm. How many of those people do you think really are a great driver? You know, Depends what city you're in. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> if you're in here, Chicago, not very many. Here, everybody's terrible. So You think so? Yes. I think there are some bad drivers <laughs> around this city for <laughs> sure. But I think it's, you know, I think... We have our own opinions about ourselves, but we cannot only solely rely on that. We need people around us, that people that we trust, that will give us real feedback. Hey, you're not listening to me. Hey, you, you know, I feel like you're, you're coming off like this way. And, you know, and it's like, oh, I didn't even know that. You know, thank you for telling me. That's something I'm going to work on. And really taking that information and trying to be better. Absolutely. But people too much, we just kind of go, oh, yeah, no, that was great. What? It all goes back to do you have friends? If you have a booger in your nose, do you have the friends that are <laughs> going to tell you to blow your nose or not? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. I want those kind of friends in my life. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to be self-aware like that because it takes some introspective thinking to where you're going to be. you got to be able to not be like self-deprecating necessarily, but to be critical of yourself, and then you got to question if you're right or not. Right. 
And then maybe you're partially right. Maybe it's like very situationally based and very like contextually based. Like maybe at work, it, I, I'm, I come off as arrogant at work, but like in my social life, I'm extremely humble or vice versa. It's, it's, you, you gotta like consider that you gotta be able to criticize yourself and then be able to consider if that's right or wrong. Yeah. Cause some people can go, Oh, I look in a mirror and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm so fat. Well, that's maybe what I see, but is that what other people see? Probably not. I mean, it's, we got to get out of our own perceptions of everything and our own perception of ourselves, you know, and, and really if we want to truly work on ourselves and we want to be a better person, we want to be better at work. We want to be, have better relationships. We want to have stronger friendships. It takes, it takes effort. What would you say, um, for like somebody in their twenties, what would you say like a good way to, I mean, it might not even be age based, Mm -hmm. but what would you say? a good strategy for figuring out like more self-awareness as you navigate throughout your twenties would be. Yeah. Well, I was at a, a, a conference, a women's conference and four one seven magazine, um, had put it on and there was an author there that she had wrote a book, um, about self-awareness and she gave a speech about it. And I did find it really, really fascinating. And, you know, at first you start thinking about all the people in your life that aren't self-aware that, you know, <laughs> you know, but you really can't think like that. You really have to think, okay, you know, what about, let me look at myself. And, you know, I think as a young person, when you're kind of learning how to, um, you know, you're, you're building your groups of, of friends, you're really planning your life. I think, you know, that's what your 20s is for. You know, you get, you get, get to plan your life. In your 20s you get to figure out what you like and what you don't like a lot of phases you know a lot of phases yeah i mean i think in your (laughs) 20s you need to be doing stuff that is valuable that will add value to your life just sitting and you know doing this or this or this you know just to pass time staying in a bad relationship or um, a crappy job or something like that that's not going how much value is that going to add to your life but taking an internship taking a foreign language class, learning something new, take, you know, watching a, a thing online, a course, whatever, that stuff adds value, you know, and thinking about the things that you want in your life. So try new shit and hang out with new people, you know, mm. don't find that one group and then just never get out of it. Um, but I think it, uh, if you're talking about self-awareness and I kind of went off off that but no these are all elements of self-awareness it's a really broad term (laughs) it really is but if you're talking about self-awareness it's important to find um you know like trusted advisors that people that you trust that will be honest with you throughout whether it's at work whether it's you know in your family life whether it's a teacher you know ask them hey you know i'm looking for real feedback how can i improve yeah and and get it and you know and and not be afraid of of criticism because but it does have to be a trusted person because if it's not a trusted person they may lead you astray they may not they might still sugarcoat it they might still you know they might maybe they don't like you at all and they're just really mean you know Mm -hmm. i mean who knows but but find trusted people mentors people that will help you you know in your 20s and and plan know that every moment in your 20s does matter it's not a time to waste it's a time to plan absolutely yeah i like that i saw something recently on social media i don't remember the entire premise but it was i think it was called like the 30 30 30 rule or something like that okay okay and it pretty much went along the lines of spend 30 percent of your time with people your age 30 percent of time with people that are older than you and i forgot what the other 30 percent was like but that's something I've realized lately because, I, I mean, obviously I'm in college. I spend most of my time with people my own age. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I, I really have started to enjoy being around people older than me because they just have this understanding. I mean, they have wisdom, whatever you want to call it. They have this understanding that you, I don't know, you just you don't really gain without time, without time lived in different life experiences. Like, for example, whenever I was saying I'm, I'm going to Europe, and every every person I've told that's older than me, they always give them give me the feedback, and they're like, "Do it, like do it." And they always say, "Like do it before you get married, do it before you have kids." And I'm like, 
Yeah, absolutely. I like that. I like that. Like, it just makes me feel a lot better versus, like, if I were to be going and, and say I'm going to do that, and they're like, no, focus on your career. Like, yeah. once you get out of college, do this. And it just makes me feel a lot better about executing yeah. and following through with that decision. And I think, you know, when I say – when I when I'm talking about value and adding value to your life, you know, when you go to Europe, you know, you could be open to, you know, are you going to, um, hey, I'm going to try to make 20 great connections with 20 people in these different industries and learn from them and just Mm. ask them for coffee or whatever. Or, you know, have some goals, you know, of how that trip is going to obviously add value because it's going to give you great perspective. It's going to, you're going to learn a lot. But, you know, is there some other piece of value that you could add, you know, that would look great on a resume at some point or give you a leg up in something or, you Just know. personal growth. Yeah. How can you grow in some way besides just going and just going looking and at a, bun- a bunch of churches and, and partying? Right. and You know, is there something else that you could do that would look great on a, on a resume or something? You know, is there, I don't know, you know, is there a... You know, have some sort of goal in mind or some sort of thing to set. You know, I'm going to make these types of connections. Um, I'm going to, you know, and I'm going to get these connections because these connections could be great for you later on. You yeah, know, true. I don't know. I mean, I'm just, I'm sure, you know, if you're interested in a certain podcast that happens in London, send them an email before you go. Hey, man, I have a podcast. I listen to you all the time. I would give anything to just sit in, watch you, meet you. This is when I'm going to be there. It'd be awesome, you know, and just like reach out, you uh-huh. know, I, I guarantee they'd be like, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. I never even thought about doing that. You know, never I thought mean, about like, that. You got to do, you know, so, I mean, Gary V talks about that stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, okay, go, go home and email 50 event planners. If you want to be in the event business and email 50 planners and tell them, Hey man, I'll work, you know, for dirt cheap. I just want to learn the industry. I want to learn this. I want to learn that, uh-huh. you know, and see where it takes you. And I, I believe that. I think that's, that's a great, that's a great way to think. Absolutely. You know, think about value. I like that. Instead of just going there and kind of like wandering the land. Because you're not studying abroad, right? You're just going. No, I'm not studying abroad. Yeah. yeah I'm just going. So, you know, because you could say, well, I studied in, you know, I studied in Spain, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, maybe there's Have something. Have some aim. Yeah, something that you could bring back that is going to add value to just to your life, to what you, your future. Your and future. I would honestly, that's a huge part of what I'm hoping to gain from that. Like going back to self-awareness, that definitely being a variable. But I also want to gain some really cool connections. Like yeah. I love the idea of – I don't have Snapchat, but like have you ever seen Snapchat, like the, the Snap map? Mm-hmm. And p- some people will have – I don't know, I've seen some of my friends, and it's just, like, Springfield, St. Louis. Like, it's people, like, in a very specific area. But then I've seen other of my friends, and it's, like, they have friends all over the place. And I think I think having friends that, like you were saying earlier, of great diversity and also just very different life experience, that's going to, like, add to my life so yeah. much. Plus, if I, if I ever want to – if I realize, like, how much easier travel is versus how, how I think it is now, like, I want to gain the art of – figuring out how to navigate in in a country that doesn't speak English. I want to be able to figure out oh, with no Wi-Fi, like mm-hmm. be able to figure these things out and also just understand how accessible they really are. Like if I have like the only burden or the only, only restriction would be financial means later on in life. Like if I have a friend over in say Berlin, Germany, mm-hmm. and the only restriction for me getting from point A to point B would be time off of work and then money. Then I can just do it. I can just like pull the trigger and then I have the connection there. I can reconnect with that person. And who knows? Who knows? You don't know. I There was a TED Talk that I was watching the other day and I can't remember. I, I feel bad. I can't remember who it was. But she was talking about loose ties and that that's why you have to hang out with different people that are not in your circle you know you guys are all you guys kind of think the same you have similarities you have similar belief systems you know all of that but she talks about loose ties being really your ticket to a opportunity that what do you oper- mean by loose ties so like people that you don't hang out with every day they're it's not your best friend it's an acquaintance 
It's someone that you, you've taken the time to say hello to, you know, and you've met and you made that connection. And then you kind of go off on your own and then maybe you connect again. That's how, that's where opportunities come. If you think about any time that you've gotten a really good, a, a job offer or you just got invited to something really cool or, you know, something like that. Is it from your best friend? Unlikely. No. Because it would have happened years ago, right? Exactly. It's not from your best friend. It's from a loose tie. It's from an acquaintance. It's from someone that you just happened to make a good impression on and took the time to, you know, recognize them and they recognize you and make that connection. And then you moved on. And, and you know, you build those. And that's where our opportunities come from. I mean, I'm, you know, I mean, you're, you're not going to sit around and meet, you know, the, the woman of your dreams by being introduced by your roommate. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, that's probably not going to happen. You know, but maybe the lady across the street has a hot granddaughter and you took her trash out for her and was nice. Boom. Loose tie. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and not just throwing out these people just because they're different. Yep. That's, that's a great point. That's yeah. a great point. Like, yeah. I mean, my next door neighbor, I've always lived next to college students. Like, ever since being in college, like, all my next door neighbors yeah. are college students. And this is the first semester of college. Where I've come in and my next door neighbor's like, I mean, he's like a 70 year old man and me and him are homies, man. <laughs> like last night I went over there and, um, he, he let me have some tea. And then the other day he cooked me a, like the best steak I ever had this morning. I was leaving for class and, um, oh, what did I, what did I, oh, he said he wanted to buy some rental properties around here. And I was like, oh, I have a friend who lived in this place. I can get you a contact. I got him a contact. Like, Boom. and who yeah. would have thought that like me and him would get along, you know? And just to, to overlook those differences and be able to reconcile the uh, fact that we're all just humans and we're all pretty similar in a lot of ways. I mean, you and I even like, I mean, you're female. If you want to look at that as like a huge difference, you're, you got what, like 10 years on me, mm-hmm. like very, you could look at that and be like all these differences, but at the same time we relate in a lot of ways too. So being able to find that like common ground between people that on the surface level might be considered at first glance like to be um very different than you being able to find common ground and build that relationship yeah and it's not about i mean i'm not saying that you have to sit there and you know and and have dinner with them or anything like that i mean it it can be as simple just taking a moment to just engage authentically with that person absolutely that's what I enjoy. I've been serving but lately. You're good at that. You, yeah. I feel like you know, got the podcast. All the, you're good at making the connections. I just was pointing it out as how valuable that is. And since you are good at really just kind of seeing people for who they are, and you're very open minded, and you like to talk and listen and things like that, like you have an up, you know, an up and up in that. And I think you know, just recognizing it and seeing the value in it. Absolutely. You know, and, and just being conscious of it could really, really help in, in as you plan your future. And It's good advice. Yeah. That's good advice. And also, I, I kind of enjoy. It's not my advice. It was someone else's advice. <laughs> taking it here and, and, yeah, regurgitating it. Just but. repeating it. That's all you are. <laughs> That's all you are. You just, re- oh, wow. You just repeat things. <laughs> no, but I, I enjoy that, too, whenever um, you try to connect with somebody and then they're not reciprocating much. It's like, how can I get through to this person? Yeah. How can I get through to them? And some some people are easier right off the bat. Like I, I I'm probably just a little bit easier than other people, and other people are easier than me. You know, some people it's, it is it's hard. It's hard to break through with everybody. Yeah, but you've seen people where it's like God, they feel so they seem so shut off. You know, oh, you know, I went to my. I think it was it was it was kind of a, a neighbor of my boyfriend's who invited us to, a party. And I wanted to go to this party, number one, because the homeowner has a really cool mid-century house, and I wanted to see the house. But we Wait, went, what's mid-century? Like 1950s? Yeah, mid-century okay. modern. And so 50s, yeah. And If you could pull that up a little bit closer. I'll just sit up <laughs> And uh, so we, we ended up going, and we were definitely the youngest by, I don't know, you know, 20 years probably. Mm-hmm. And but we ended up having so much fun because really, one, they were really open to us. They, they were super nice. They, you know, they definitely let, like helped us be involved in everything. And 
And so they were really excited that we were there. But I just was like, God, it was so refreshing to be around people that really just like talk to each other and they're not just like on their phones and clicky, you know, Mm -hmm. they, they didn't have that, you know, I mean, I think that they were past all of that in their lives being clicky or like being uncomfortable by talk comfortable by talking to a new person or something like that. It's just not in their radar. And it was really nice because sometimes, you know, people just get stuck. They're like, Oh, I'm uncomfortable. I don't want to talk to anybody new. I don't, you know, and you can tell they just click around, you know, and makes it really difficult for people that do want to talk to new people. It's like, gosh, guys, like you talk to them every day and you're in this environment where there's all these people and like you guys still choose to, you know, group up and kind of alienate everybody around you. It's really, it's kind of sad. It's like a social recluse. I mean, it's like they think they're being really social, but, like, you're not being social. You're Mm -hmm. at a social event, and you just are hanging out with each other. I don't know. You paid money to get into this event, (laughs) and you're sitting around like you could do in your living room. Yeah. Yeah. I was – and anytime, like, I go out with, like, a group of friends or whatever, I always kind of stray off and go and just make new friends. And it's very unintentional, but – I think I, I like that about myself, you know, I, I like, see, yeah, I I, like any time I go out I'm, and I, I always feel bad because some people, they see it with the, um, I don't know, they see it as you go out, you're with that group of people for the entire night, maybe you stray off for a little bit, but like I, within two minutes of walking in the door anywhere, it's like, I'll walk over and start talking to whoever. And then maybe I don't even talk to the people I came with like yeah. the entire night. I think that's a great thing. It's not, it's not disingenuous. Other people so. appreciate it. You know, yeah, you're getting probably something out of it, but I think other people really appreciate that. And also to just be, like, genuine with making those those connections and friends or whatever you want to say. Like, not looking at everybody like, what can I gain from you? You know? Yeah, and, I mean, even if you feel uncomfortable doing it, which I always do. I'm not, like – I mean, I, th- I think I'm an extrovert, yes, but I still have awkward moments. I always kind of think, oh, my God, I look like I'm such a nerd and, like, this person's really cool and, you know, I'm going to say the wrong thing. And I still feel that. Yeah, totally. Um, but it's never as bad as what I think it's going to be, and I just kind of just let that go. But there's a quote in downtown Springfield and I, I never saw it until it's like written on the side of a building somewhere. And it was like living in the future is anxiety provoking or something along those lines. Okay. Living in the past is depression or something along those lines. And then living in the present moment is peace. And I definitely feel that. I feel like whenever I, I don't have social anxiety, but sometimes I will overthink things beforehand which produces like a very minimal amount of anxiety i'm like well what if this what if this what if this and you could even do that with this podcast like and i've i've found it's just easiest just to like sit down and be genuine and be cool and start talking with somebody and yeah and not be really afraid to be just like yourself and be a weirdo if that's what you are exactly i mean just do it it's fine it just being uniquely yourself is is the most powerful thing probably that you could do but it's not easy i feel like it is easy i i think it's difficult because of just the massive amounts of things that are kind of thrown in our face on social media and things like that and you know it sounds like you you seem to like have a good grasp on you know, who you are and, and what you, what your personality is. You have good self-awareness, you know. I think some other people don't. I don't think, I think that was something that I struggled with for a long time was, like, just, you know, what do I want for my life? Not what does my family want? What does society want me to have? You know, what, it was very difficult for me to weed through that. And so I, through that, you know, just tried a lot of things, said yes a lot, took a lot, took a lot of risks, and, you know, was able to navigate through some of that. 
But I still try to like sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm trying to keep up with the Joneses again. And I'm like, uh, it's just, yeah. you know, oh, what am I doing? Forget it. Stop. You know, because no matter, you know, no matter how good your life looks on the outside, I mean, it, that doesn't really matter, you know. It's easy to get caught in that trap, oh, too. I think it is. I think 100% it is. And, you know, with social media and everything, like, everyone's like, oh, this is authentic. This is authentic. I'm just being my authentic self. And I'm like, but are you? Like, what's really being your authentic self? Uh-huh. You know, like, what's really it? You know? I, kind of uh, acting, is- acting in a way that you've prepared and strategized a way that you're going to be perceived yeah through like the masses yeah that's kind of like creating a persona right it, 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 okay you're trying to be authentically yourself the the self that you've that you want to be though uh-huh. you know and the the self that you think you are which may not even be that you may not even be that person i don't know absolutely i mean it's a circle who knows i mean it's never you know it's never going to be solved it's never going to be you know, this concrete thing, it's all just, you know, subjective, but it's weird to think about. I think some of the people who put the most time and effort into those personas on social media in person, whenever you actually like get up close, talk to those people, a lot of the time they resemble a robot more than like (laughs) anybody else, you know, like the people with a lot of followers who like, you can tell they put some effort into how, what their image is, what their online image is. But their personality, it's a robot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've always had a hard time with some of that. Like, I really don't like to really just put everything out on social media. That's I've always been uncomfortable with that. You know, I, I for me, it's more like this, you know, I'm a content creator for the most part. And so I want to create engaging, entertaining, insightful content content not Mm -hmm. necessarily show you guys what I had for breakfast and then you know every single thing but that's what people want they want like a full look into your life and you're like it's up to you to to decide if that's something you you're open to or not absolutely but still it's cool seeing like uh because my generation grew up with social media like our entire lives and it's cool seeing like weird seeing us mature in a lot of ways and you can tell like i don't know the people that post the most i'm like they're probably some of the most insecure people and i'll see some people who used to post a lot and then they just gave it up and i'm like i bet they're a lot happier i mean i'm just speculating but i i'm curious if they are yeah because i i something i've noticed is i a, a mistake i made especially in high school which is really interesting is you so there's like the the way of acting in this world and then preparing how like an, and anticipating how you're going to be perceived and that can lead to insecurity like to where you're like a people pleaser like we've been talking about but I've done like the the adverse side of that to where I would pretend and I was I was lying to myself I think for a few years and I I've come to notice this about myself like in recent years uh even honestly in recent months more so but that I would be like averse to, I would pretend not to care so much, but I think I actually cared more than I thought I did, you know, like more than like, I just wouldn't admit to myself. So then I would try to create the image or the persona or whatever you want to say of the, being the guy who doesn't care. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I think that's, that's a total coping mechanism or something. I don't know. My sister's always been the type where she's like, I just don't even care anymore. And I'm like, that means that you care a lot. Yeah, right? (laughs) I know you. I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm like, I, that means that you care what everyone thinks. So, yeah. And I I think, yeah, it's like a opposite response, but it's like this two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty much the exact same coin though. (laughs) I mean, the, the, more surface level and easier to understand is the person who clearly cares, like clearly cares. And you're like, okay, that's going to breed insecurity, but then flip that coin around. And the person who's pretending not to care, who like is strategizing before they act of being the person that doesn't care. 
than I mean, it's a more rewarded response is what I found. Like whenever you you are that that I don't give a fuck kind of person, like no fucks given. Like it's a more rewarded thing, but I think deep down I did care. I really yeah. do. But I've I've come more at peace with like not caring and just doing what I want because I wanted to, not to like that that's like my main motive. It's like I wanted to or maybe I I think it's funny and I think other people would find it funny or whatever it may be. Yeah. Just acting acting I mean it's just acting with um authenticity, right? I mean, I think it's – that's where it gets so complicated is because you just don't know. I think the word authenticity is just we don't know. We don't know what's authentic and what's not anymore. We have no idea. There's no way to tell through social media. There's not. There's what's authentic to you? I mean, that's like the real ugly stuff, you know. What do you mean? Like, you know, it's it's – it's showing like what really is going on, how you wake up, you know, don't brush your hair, don't do anything, take a picture. Are you going to post that? Mm-hmm. Probably not. Or do you think that's just you somebody know, not caring about their personal appearance? Because I, I still think you could be like, you could pride, not yeah, pride but that's yourself. That's what I'm just saying. I'm just saying like, you can't be like, like sort of brush your hair, put on a little lip gloss and then be like, I woke up like this. Like. You didn't, though. <laughs> yeah, right? So you're saying, like, specifically on social media? Um, I mean, I don't know. I Just with everything. I mean, I think it's just... It's a hard word to say because with all of the self-awareness talk that we just had, where we're saying that people aren't actually self-aware of what they really are or want or, you know, we, we move through life projecting a lot of different ideas and thoughts at the moment life is a roller coaster of all these things so authenticity is almost this impossible you know unreachable thing because we're so we're humans we're sponges we're sponging up every single thing you know we might have authentic moments you know where we really say what's on our mind what's really heavy on our heart you know, or whatever, and that's great. But I think as a human being, to be fully authentic, you've got to be like the Dalai Lama, you know. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, I think just it's just, meditating this, it's, it's something that we should strive for. Like, we should strive for great self-awareness. We should strive to be better people. We should try to, like, not put a facade on, you know, um, that makes people feel bad about themselves, you know, or something like that, you know, especially people that are leaders or people that have big followings potentially on social media or things that are very influential to young people. You know, I think they have a little bit more pressure to be more real. But I think I think that the idea of it is just, yes, try to be better, try to be more self-aware, try to learn about yourself, but no one in this world is ever going to really be authentic all the time. I think it's as a human, we cannot do that. It is kind of an impossible goal. Yeah. It kind of is, yeah. I know. And thought in authentic. Uh, what I mean, it was I a word that I like. I threw moments. out a, a lot too because I thought, God, I just don't, you know, I just don't want to make people feel bad and I just don't want to, um, you know, act fake or anything like that. And so, you know, I try to stay as true to myself as humanly possible but god like i'll wake up one day feeling one way and i'll wake up another day feeling another that's just me you know i and when it comes to you know when i create my content online you know i do i've learned that if i want content to really be successful and do what it needs to do which is attract an audience or you know get people to engage it has to just be the best content I can possibly create. Which is kind of an authentic goal. Yeah, I mean, it's like, how do I just do the best that I can? Like, that's, how do I, I, I don't do gimmicks. I try not to do any of that stuff. Like, it's, I, there's no easy, you know, this all that stuff. Oh, you know, you can get more followers if you do these easy tricks and, you know, things like that. Or, you, you know, because I do, the, you know, run socials for brands and things like that. And, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, it's like, if you really want to be a successful content creator, you just have to create 
awesome content. Every piece, every piece, put your heart into it. Every piece, try hard. So do you, do you, no matter what it is, create you know, it for because me, you like it or do you create yeah. it so that other people like it? I create it because I like it because I'm passionate about it because I built it or I made it or mm-hmm. I styled it, you know, so it's a piece of me. But, you know, for me, it's like I have to have really like a high level of photography. I have to really think about the the post that goes along with it. I really have to think if I'm running an ad or something that that verbiage, you know, it really has to be eye catching. It really has to say something different. It has to be visually compelling in like it just has to be the best that I could do for that one thing. It has to be worthy. And so it's, it's a, it's, I'm working harder at it, but if I'm going to put it out there, I'd rather, I'd rather it just be good. I want to create content where you just can't look away. Okay. Absolutely. You know, and, and for me, that is that, you know, of course I, you know, most of my stuff is very, I mean, it depends on what I'm working, but my personal brand is very style. It's very color. It's very trend. It's very, um, creative artistic because you like it because I love that that's my world um that's my world that I live in I photograph my house and and things like that and do kind of weird experiential you know kind of design scenes and things like that and I enjoy doing it I love that and I want to take a picture of it and I want to see it and I want to share it so but you know I used to just kind of post oh I kind of like that I'm gonna post that oh I like that and I thought, you know what? No, I'm not going to do that anymore. I, I'm going to, every single thing that I put out there is going to be the highest of the highest level that I can possibly do. It's like, I it's mean, a challenge saying, for myself. Yeah. We'll, see how, we'll see how long it lasts. Uh-huh. But. I mean, they're saying hell yeah or it's a no. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, interesting, it's yeah. either a hell yeah or it's a no. Exactly. That's That's... Because it's like, I'm just done with the games. I'm done with, you know, thinking too much about it. Am I being authentic? Am I doing this? And, uh, you know, oh, people unfollowing you and following you and all this crap. I just, I'm done with it, you know. I just, I'm going to put out great content. If you like it, great. I'm going to engage with people that I love their content and they're doing the exact same thing. They're putting their heart into it. For whatever it is, you know, just because, you know, I follow people. Like, one guy is just like a man with a van. And he has this, like, rad van, and he just photographs this van all over the place. And I, like, every photo is, like, awesome and cool. And he loves that van. Mm-hmm. And I feel that love, you know, for his van. And, of course, I'm like, oh, I, I love this guy. You know, I love He's this doing content. Him. You know? And so that was really cool to me. So, you know, those are the types of people I engage with. Those are the types of people that, you know, I appreciate on different different levels, obviously, you know. You, if if your your if your content is about um, you know telling a, a humorous story or you know if it's about you know I don't even know you know d- different ideas it, you you don't have to focus on having the prettiest photo it's not aesthetics that you're trying to attract you know you're doing something different people love you for you know this or this or this you know people love you for your witty humor people love you for you know, your honest take on cereal. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Authenticity. Going I mean, back to that. you know, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, I think it's just you're doing what you love and it's coming through. You're passionate about it. You love it. It's coming through. And, you know, and you're ta- putting the time in. And people, there's just no, there's no quick way to get anywhere than just putting the effort and the time in. And that's where I'm just like, that's what I'm about now. It's like I'm just. Just doing your best, working hard. This is probably a dilemma that block anybody. Block by block by block. Yeah. Just that's, what more can you ask? Yeah, that's a, it's probably, a, this is probably a uh, dilemma that a lot of creative people, anybody trying to pursue a creative endeavor kind of come to. Yeah, I mean, and I, content creation is kind of interesting because people say, "Oh, you know, you just got to put a lot of content out there. You got to put a lot of content." And you, you know, you do. You got to stay relevant. You got to stay active. You got to keep doing it. Find that balance between quality but, and quantity. But like that, for me, it's like, yeah. And I mean, you you find your, you know, not everything is like, oh my god, it's the best thing I've ever done. But it's either I f- 
fucking love this and I want to share it and share my love for it and share share with people that I think it's rad or I don't. Uh-huh. And if I don't, later. Fair enough. Yeah. I'm trying to think of any other topics. <laughs> How long have we gone? We've gone 50 minutes. If you want to keep going, I'm down. If I probably do have to wrap this up in like 10, though. Okay. Because I got to go to work. You have any questions? Um, I can, I let's you had check a out. Let's check out. Um, it's like scary to go on a different topic, though. <laughs> okay. Have you, yeah. Have you ever had a lucid dream? Okay. Lucid dream. Um, 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 no, not that I can remember. I dream a lot, but I don't. Lucid dreaming is where you can kind of control and you kind of are, have some awareness of what you're doing and can kind of plan what you do in your dream, right? Yeah, the, my, my interpretation is it's almost as if whenever you're dreaming, it seems like you're riding in a roller coaster, but you have no control where that roller coaster goes. And yeah. it could be really bumpy or it could be, and that's what we might consider yeah. like a nightmare, or it can be pretty smooth sailing. And that might be like a pretty... I don't know, even enjoyable, but it's weird because it's like emotionally engaging and like it feels just as real as this reality and you can't differentiate the difference between wakefulness state of consciousness in comparison to being asleep. But lucid dreaming in my interpretation is that you're like, you're just more intentional. You're more intentional. You're able to hijack that unconscious uh, – what, what would you even call it? Unconscious experience – and be able to place your intent um, and yeah. be able to to do what you want to do in that dream. No, I mean, I just, I haven't had anything like that. I've, yeah, I've, I think some people train to be able to do that over time. Like, they teach themselves, but. It takes a lot of no, practice. I've had dreams where I have woken up and really been pretty emotional about something, but that's usually, like, when I was younger and I don't have these anymore, but I would have children or a child or something and I would wake up and be like, where is my kid? You know, (laughs) who has my child? Then you get like emotionally attached to this hypothetical kid. And so it was, yeah, I mean, there was definitely like (laughs) a, yeah, you had to come down from that a little bit. Like, I mean, yeah, I like remember feeling like really, really deep emotion that like was not really something that I'm used to feeling. Uh So like, I think that's why that stood out. And then I have had dreams where I'm a, I'm a, I'm like a true crime junkie. So, um, I, I watch just the darkest, darkest shit ever (laughs) and listen to a lot of true crime podcasts and things like that. Which by the way, I've noticed women get into that more than guys do. Really? Which is so weird. That is interesting. I would like to know why that is. I don't know why that is, but I know a lot of girls that are into that and not a ton of dudes. (sighs) I would believe that. I would believe that. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I also get it. think like like whenever you're out it's alone downtown, like I don't really feel super fearful. Like yeah, I might be looking over my, I might be anticipating danger, but I'm not like like scared in that moment until like it were to happen. But I, I, I think, think women are just more like we've been told our whole lives like be careful of this, be careful of this. Some guy might be in the back of your car. Some guy, you know. And then the stories that really always hit the headlines and like made a big splash in the news and and um, true crime, true crime culture is women. You know, a lot of women getting murdered or children getting murdered. Like if they like the guy down the street gets murdered, like nobody really cares. Like. You know, but like, oh, if, like if the prom queen gets murdered. Oh, like, hell no. I got to hear about it. Why <laughs> is that? Why are every why, detail? Like if women are more vulnerable in that circumstance, <sighs> why would there be like infatuation with that? So you know? I don't know. And I mean, like I have had this thing, too, where like I don't obviously like I do not want to be murdered. I don't want that to happen to me. But same, like same. I like <laughs> will think about it sometimes and be like, OK, you know. I don't want to die, like, in a car accident or something and, like, oh, she wasn't wearing her seatbelt and she died. Like, like I want to, like, go out with a splash, you know? So, I mean, it would suck because I would actually have to get murdered and, like, <laughs> go through that to, like, have the story about me. But you my, have like, a better legacy. story to leave your legacy with. So. A better ending to the story. So, yeah. But I have thought about that a lot, but. 
But no, the dreaming thing, I was watching, um, God, what was that? Ugh. Anyway, it was a, um, I had a Jillian from uh, X-Files in it, and it was about a serial killer, and he would go into women, single women's apartments and, like, break into them, and, Is like, it a real person? No, this was just a TV show. Okay. But he was, like, in the TV show, he was, like, super hot. So he's, like, this hot guy. He's, like, breaking into – but he, like, hates single women. For, and he's married and all this stuff. But he hates single women for some reason in their 30s. And Reminds would, me of Ted Bundy. He would – so I don't know. There's some sort of blow. I don't even know. But they – he would break into their apartments, and he would kind of, like, just – look at stuff and then you know and then he would leave and then he would follow them a little bit and then he would break in again and he'd look at some stuff and he'd leave you know he built this momentum going it's like a relationship until he finally did strangle them and i watched a show and i could watch things and just go straight to bed and i'm not scared at all (laughs) nothing like nothing phases me but for one one evening i like just I'd fallen asleep and woke up and he had like just walked into my bedroom. And I mean, it's one of those dreams where you're in this moment, you're in the moment, you're in your room, everything is normal around you, but you know, as it would be as you woke up and in my dream, I wake up and sit up and he's there. And I mean, like I thought I was going to have a heart attack, but then I woke up again. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? And it tripped me out. Like, I'm obviously still talking about it. Like, <laughs> You're probably questioning it if it me even out. happened. Yeah, like, it Like, you're like, up. okay, am I actually awake now? Like, I just yeah. woke up a second ago. Like am I actually awake? like over and over and over again. So Did that, that just undo the first awakening? Or? That was so there's a, There's a psychological effect for that. I, I read about this recently, but I don't remember what it's called. Scary. It, that I mean, I just, it was so real. It felt so real. It felt like I had just woken up. And he was there, you know, in that moment, like, I mean, face to face, like with him and then waking up again. And then I woke up again and I sat up again, you know, it was, uh, ugh. so I don't know what that is. but <laughs> That's bizarre. It's scary. That's yeah. bizarre. So it's not lucid dreaming, but I don't know. It was some scary False shit. awakening. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That's like your own mind just psyching you out just to scare yeah. you even more and second guess everything. I think it everything. just, that show just, I had probably just watched it too much and it kind of hit close to home, you know, and, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm in my thirties now. That's wild. That's wild. He always liked like women in their thirties, professional, single. And of course that's why I liked it because I was like, oh my God, that's what I am. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> But that, again, that infatuation, <laughs> yeah. infatuation for like your own vulnerabilities. Yeah, that's that's wild. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, it's almost like there's something deeper there. I don't understand it. I don't get it. That's for another podcast. Yeah, right. If you ever want to talk about that, I'll take it on that. <laughs> it's speculating, speculating. <sighs> yeah. Man, I I don't think I've ever lucid dreamed personally. I don't think I have. That'd be pretty wild. And it, again, like I, uh, it is a trained thing for most people, and a lot of people also experience it in their lifetime. But I know I had a friend that what he would do is he would like point, he would poke his finger before going to bed. He like be, he made it like his ritual, and he, what he wanted to do is like almost I guess you'd say subconsciously create this habit of poking his finger, mm-hmm. and at some point he poked his finger in a dream, and because he created the habit like in a wakeful state. And he poked through his finger and that like triggered awareness to his like, what would you even say? Like waking consciousness or, or sense of who you are to where he was able to like control that dream from Mm -hmm. there on out. Mm -hmm. That's, that's weird. It's just so crazy, but I don't know. I I could not imagine happening that. (laughs) I'm that kind of time. Yeah, right. It's probably a lot of work just to figure out how to control your own dreams. All right, I'm taking a selfie. Selfie to end the podcast? Yeah. I can't do it. Got it. I started with two fingers up. (laughs) Two thumbs up. And then you changed your mind. And then I went to one. 
I was like two's two's a little too much. <laughs> Daniel Tosh, <laughs> we'll eager. end on this. Daniel okay. Tosh, um, oh, what did he say? He said something along the lines. He's like, "Why can only gay dudes wave with two hands?" Which, if you think, of, if you like, really watch that, like, like Harold waved to you with two hands. Is it? It's like flamboyant in a way, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. My my dad told me that one time, and he's not like a super like masculine guy to tell you tell you like don't do that. Yeah. But uh, I I like I like waved like kind of like frantically to a friend when I was younger, and he's like, I I, I forgot what he said, but he was pretty much saying like don't, don't do, that. do that. Like more so, just like gave just give be like cool a cool about it. Yeah, just be like more chill, I guess. I don't know. Well, women had to do that. The British. This the, like weird like lazy beauty queen wave that like makes no sense doesn't even look like a weave yeah that's i weird. like the i like the in your face wave it gets attention i mean it's it shows you care exactly it's, it's, it's like authentic authentic authenticity <laughs> shows excitement yes we need more of that that with a smile what a warm welcome to encounter somebody else yeah well, well cool thanks for having me thank you thank you for coming on i appreciate yeah. this I, I hope but you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. I know. It. It's, it gave me the bug again a little bit. Oh, my gosh. What do you mean? The the podcast bug. Like you kind of yeah, missed doing it? Yeah, I do. I do. But. Who knows? I don't know. We'll see. Well, awesome. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Heather. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you.